It's often been said that the eyes are the windows to the soul, and this is so true when it comes to portrait photography. There's nothing that grabs the eyes of the viewer more than the eyes that are looking at them. And so when you're retouching, it's really important that you bring some life into those eyes and without them looking overly retouched or fake or artificial, because once you see that deadness in there when you're retouched, you completely lose the impact. So let's jump into Photoshop right now and look at some eye retouching. And hi, I'm Colin Smith from PhotoshopCafe.com. Don't forget, check out the new Photoshop Cafe for a bunch of free tutorials. All right, let's get started. All right, what we've got here is we've got a picture of Lena that I shot last year in my studio. And let's have a close up look. I'm going to double click the eye, the little uh, magnifying glass here to go to 100%, use the space bar to move up. So as you can see here, this is directly out of the camera. We haven't done any adjustments yet. And we can see here we've got some things going on with the eyes here. They're looking a little bit red. Also notice we've got a shadow over this. They're looking kind of dark because she's wearing extended eyelashes for the shoot, which is also casting a little bit of a shadow on the top part of those eyes. So what we want to do is we want to brighten up these eyes. Um, also notice that the diffusion is kind of losing the catch light. The catch light was actually up a little higher. What it's doing is catching the reflection of a catch light, which is almost making it look like your eyes are foggy. And, uh, and really not good. So let's look at fixing some of these issues right now. Now the techniques that we're gonna do, we would do for both eyes. I'm just gonna focus on one eye because uh, you can learn the techniques you need from this one eye without having to watch me do it twice. So the first thing we wanna do is we've got some bloodshot in the eyes here and we wanna get rid of the red. Now big mistake I've seen people do is they grab a new layer and uh, one of the mistakes they use is they grab the brush tool and just start painting away with white. And as you can imagine, uh, we zoom out a little bit and, you know, it's looking like she's a goal, uh, not very cool. You could drop the opacity down. You could try all kinds of little tricks to try and fix that, but it doesn't really matter what you do. That's never going to look right. And the same thing goes true for just jumping in there and trying to do some levels or whatever in there. Let's not do that. What we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the bloodshot in the eyes by first of all, creating a hue saturation adjustment layer. So under the adjustment layer here, we're going to choose hue saturation. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the saturation all the way down. So you'll notice right now that the entire photograph is black and white. And this is actually something that I like to do a lot when I'm working with masks. What I'll do is I'll just apply the adjustment exactly how I want it. And then I'll go back and mask it. I'll show you how. So here we go. We've got the adjustment and we've got this mask selected. There's a couple of ways to do it. Double click will bring up the properties panel. And in here, you can just choose to invert. And now what it does is it just makes the mask black. The other option is you could do is you could just hit Command I to invert the mask. So what it's doing is it's actually hiding the effects of the mask. So it's not doing anything. That means that we now have the opportunity to paint this adjustment in exactly where we want. So I'm going to grab the B for the brush tool and I'm going to drop the size down, hitting the left bracket key. And I'm just going to paint into this eye here with black. Now, uh, notice that we're painting with black, nothing's happening. That's because I should be painting with white. So let's choose white. And notice as I paint with white, it does is it hides the effect of that mask and it gives us that cool effect. Now, in a situation like this, I might actually zoom in more than 100%. So let's zoom right in so we can see what we're doing. And uh, make sure I grab my little brush tool here. And we're just painting in here, reducing those effects. Now, typically I like to do a lot of my retouching at 100%, but in this case, I want a little precision. So I'm just gonna put a little soft edge around there going in. I wanna keep that pink, because if you make that, uh, take the color out of there, it doesn't look natural. But we can take a little bit more out this area, just up to the edge there, just get rid of the uh, little bit of the bloodshot, bloodshot appearance, but you still don't wanna take the pink out of the areas that should be pink. So I said Command 1 goes to 100%, and if we look at this now before and after, you can see just by taking the color out, you're getting a much more realistic look to the eye. However, for most eyes, what I've done there really would work. But in this case, we've got some pretty heavy veins. So we want to reduce the amount of veins. So this is an additional step that you might take if your particular eyes have heavy veins like these do. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer. And we're going to call this new layer veins. Typically, I'm pretty lazy and I don't name my layers a lot, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to pretend that uh, that I do name all my layers. 
<laughs> because of course I want you to be in a good habit of doing that. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the healing brush tool. And now with the healing brush, you want to make sure that you go up here and make sure that the hardness is turned all the way down. I want a nice soft brush here because uh, the healing brush does not typically look good when you have a uh, hard edge on it. I'm just going to increase the size of the brush. And then what I'm going to do is just going to sample the color here and then just paint. I'm going to do the same here. And if it gets too bright, like an area like that, just sample from a slightly darker area and just pop that in there and let it just kind of blend in. So what we want to do is we want to paint up here, but we don't really have a lot of good areas for sampling. So we're going to grab a clean area here, holding down the option or the alt key, click to create a sample. And now we're just going to go and I'm just tapping. I'm not dragging with this tool. I'm just tapping. And typically if you do drag with the healing brush, it can pr produce some really bad results. So I want to go for a lighter area. So I'm just going to select it from here and then just kind of dropping it on there a couple of times. And you can kind of see where we've gone with this. Let's look at this before and after we've reduced the veins quite a bit. Now, one of the things you may want to do for more realism is just take the opacity all the way down and then just bring it up a little bit. So I'm going to take it up to about there. Right now we're about 58% before and after. So we're reducing the veins, but we're not completely removing them. And this once again, adds more realism because when you retouch it too far and you make something absolutely perfect, it's not natural anymore and it starts to look artificial. So, so far we've done this and we've got a very natural looking vein removal. So that's the first part of the eye retouch where we've cleaned up the white of the eye. I'm going to add another video here in part two. We're going to look at the iris and cleaning up the pupil of the iris, adding a catch light and just really bringing the rest of this eye to life. So don't forget, add a comment here. Let us know what you'd like to learn. Uh, come back often. We're going to do new videos every week. Don't forget to subscribe and like this. Until then, I'll see you at PhotoshopCafe.com.